Hey, what's up? It's Randy. I did something really stupid this week. So I went to an auction. I thought I'm going to buy a microphone from an auction. So I went and picked up this Audio-Technica AT2020 large diaphragm condenser microphone. I opened the box and I found this. What the heck is this? This is an AT2040 dynamic microphone from Audio-Technica. So today we're going to make a review of the AT2040, not the AT2020. I hope you enjoy. This is an XLR dynamic microphone. It does require an audio interface to be powered. And right now you're listening to it through my Sound Devices Mix Pre 6 Mark II field recorder. Okay, so first a little overview, then we'll get into some sound tests and we'll shoot it out against some other microphones. And then I'll give you my final thoughts about where this microphone sort of fits in the ecosystem here. All right, let's start off with the build quality. And I took it off the stand so that I can kind of show you this microphone. The build quality is like a 10 out of 10. I'm, I'm not joking, this thing is robust. It's really heavy. The grill on it feels non indestructible, non-destructible. The XLR connection on the bottom, I would give it like a nine out of 10. It feels okay. You can kind of see there's a little bit of wobble there. And one small thing is that this mounting bracket that goes around the outside, as well as this clip, they're all plastic. All right, next, what comes in the box? Um, I don't really know what comes in the box to be completely candid because, well, this is the wrong box for the wrong microphone. But I saw on their website that it does come with a pouch. And I think that this is the right pouch for this microphone. As well, it comes with a uh, 3 8 to 5 8 adapter. Again, this is plastic. This feels insanely cheap. I actually swapped out for a metal one on this boom arm. It has has a built-in pop filter slash windscreen. It has a built-in shock mount, which is actually kind of interesting. I've never really heard of anyone doing that before. Can of tell if I bump the desk. It's a little bit of transmission if I bump the pole here. It's actually pretty good. And finally, this is a large diaphragm microphone, which is pretty cool. Um, they advertise on their website that that means less operating noise, so kind of nice. Okay, for the fellow nerds out there, let's cover some of the tech specs. So this is a dynamic hypercardioid microphone. It's really interesting that they would choose hypercardioid for this. So I actually had to look up the difference between hypercardioid and supercardioid because I always get those two mixed up. Both supercardioid and hypercardioid are going to pick up quite a lot of sound from the butt of the microphone. I think cardioid would have been a better option for gamers. And then for the frequency spectrum, it picks up 80 hertz to 16 kilohertz. The sensitivity is negative 53 decibels and it is a 600 ohm impedance. Now let's jump into our first test here, which is an axis test. I'm going to take this off the boom pull again so I can give you a bit of a demo on that. So we'll start with our on axis sound. So this is directly on axis. Um, my lips are just about touching the capsule and we'll start to rotate this. We're at about 45 degrees to the capsule right now and this should have some significant rejection just past 90. So you can hear 90 right now. We're just past 90. This should be probably the most dead spot on the microphone. And then as I spin to the back side here, should actually have some sound being picked up again. Check, 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 check. And we'll go back and back and back and back and we're back to right on the front. So as you can tell, this microphone has a pretty narrow focus. So even like right here, I start to get some coloration. Check, 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 check. Hey, hey, start to get some coloration right on the side there. This isn't gonna be ideal if you like to move around a lot. This is really best if you're comfortable being sat right on your microphone the whole time. Okay, now on that same topic, let's go ahead and do some proximity tests here. So right now my lips are just on the grill of the microphone and I'll back up to about three inches. Check, check, check. Here's about three inches from the diaphragm. We'll go back to about six inches. Check, check, check. Hey, hey. And we'll go back to about a foot. This is a foot away from the microphone. And it's about two feet away from the microphone. This is my Razer Huntsman keyboard for my gaming desk. Check, check, check. Hey, 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 hey. Check, check, check. Hey, hey. Testing one, two, one, two. Check, check, check. Hey, 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 hey. Check, check, check. Testing one, two. I want to test this out against this Boya microphone that I reviewed last week because this microphone here is cardioid. And so we're going to get a lot more rejection, I think. So I'm going to do one hand on the keyboard and I'm going to try to get these mics in the exact same spot. Okay, so this is using the 2040. And this is using the Boya. Check, check, check. And I have them gain matched as best I can back on the Audio-Technica and back on the Boya. Check, 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 check. Okay, I'm not sure if that made any sort of meaningful difference if it's hypercardioid versus cardioid. So this microphone is $99. It is significantly cheaper. Check, check, check. You can kind of hear how that sound changes with a cardioid microphone. And we're going to switch back to the 2040 right now. So this is the Audio-Technica AT2040. Interestingly, I feel like this has a bit more of a honky sound to it, kind of in that like 700 hertz range. Check, 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 check. Like this sounds more like a condenser microphone to me. I don't know. Let's bring one other contender into the mix here. So this is the 
Shure SM58 microphone. Check, 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 check. And you can hear that axis rejection. This sounds a lot more muffled to me than this one. This has a lot more top end bite. Check, 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 check. It could be that I use this for live shows all the time and it's been spit on and it's been dropped and all that good stuff. Whereas this is fresh out of the box. But I, I think I got to lean to this Boya being my top pick for dialogue. I don't know. I don't know. It sounds pretty darn good to me. Okay, one other quick thing that I want to test before we get into the music samples is the plosive rejection. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Okay, enough talking. Let's get into the sound test. We'll do some singing tests and then we'll do some guitar tests. How about that? So when you figure yourself out, be sure to let me know, cause I'm burning with desire. And I will bite my tongue and hold the air within my lungs, cause I'm burning with desire. All right, so what are my final thoughts with this microphone? First of all, I'm really glad that it wasn't the AT2020 because I think that this is much cooler than the 2020. Build quality, 10 out of 10. Audio Technica, like, destroys build quality. They're so, in a good way, in a good way. They're so good with build quality. Hypercardioid is a very interesting choice. I don't really know the purpose of doing hypercardioid. To me, cardioid makes more sense because it has more rejection from the back. That's the only thing I can think of that's a flaw about this is that it doesn't have that rejection from the back. However, it has the strongest rejection from the sides. So if you have a gaming PC beside you with open fans and it's blasting away, this is really gonna help cut down on that fan noise. So untreated spaces, yeah, this is gonna be awesome for that. Keyboard sounds may not be the best. On that same note of the polar pattern, I don't know it's gonna be great for people who um, are really hyper and like to be mobile and kind of, you know, you know, look at this screen for a second and say something here and check, check over this way. And then they come back here and then you do have a significant roll off as you back away from this microphone. In terms of just the overall sound quality, I feel like it supports my voice quite nicely. I do feel like the upper mid range is a bit, a bit spicy, a bit shrill. That's really going to help you cut through in a mix, especially if you're talking over music or gaming or something like that. You're going to have a lot of bite to your voice. I do like that it's not like super bass heavy. I find some of these dynamic microphones are just like, you know. Overall, though, I got to say it's a pretty sweet mic. Great value. Great price. Great product. Great company. Pretty happy. I like black. That's it. <laughs>